Ross, 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 when are you going to do a video on your irrigation system? Well, guys, beggars and pleaders, uh, happy to take requests, but I've already done a video on this topic last year. I did two videos, I think. Uh, I did one on a soaker hose, which was another type of irrigation system, and I did one on the system I'm using right now, which is a, a drip system, and I love the drip system more than the soaker hose because the drip system, you can... Uh, very easily direct water exactly to the point where you want it. As an example, here's where the water comes out and I can just turn this in the direction that I want it. It's the middle of the pot. And then I, uh, I can also control the amount of water that comes out of that by changing these little emitters here to something that lets out more water. That, that one you see right there is a one gallon per hour emitter. And I have them for all of my five gallon trees. And that's probably a good amount of water for um, a five gallon size pot. I don't run that for an hour though. I run it for maybe 15 minutes a day, every day. And that's why it, it's so nice to have a drip system or an irrigation system. You know, there's many different systems that you can probably find on the internet that are much more, um, that just perform better than a drip system, you know, much less hassle. I'm sure, you know, I've been using this system because uh, it's just cheap and you can also uh, set this up fairly easily. And like I said before, you can direct the water where you want it and at the uh, amount of water that you want. You know, it's just, it's very easy like that. Um, it's very mainstream as well. You know, you can get lots of pieces to this stuff all over the internet in different places. Um, so I recommend using a drip system. I'm sure there's something else out there that's better though, you know. And like I said, this is creating, or this is not really creating, this is the, it's the opposite of creating. It's alleviating lots of work for me, you know, because I have all these containers, guys, somewhere in the neighborhood of 200 plus containers. I don't, I don't know. I don't keep track anymore. But you can see that, there's just too many and without something like this it would just become it just wouldn't be feasible for me to have this many potted plants it just wouldn't um, we're getting now to the point in the season where it's getting very warm all the time and I need to water even the larger ones so I've been pretty much I've pretty much gotten away with not watering up until this point you know we're almost at mid-June now um, which brings me to another point. Um, the stuff in the ground, guys, I don't water. In fact, I don't even water um, at planting. So I'll plant something. You know, I'll try not to plant it on a very hot day, obviously. But I won't actually water. I'll just plant it and the soil is already wet. Put some mulch down and it rains that often here that I don't really need to water. There's no shock involved really in anything that I plant um, it's just that easy but with, with the containers though guys you can't do that you really can't you, I mean some of these you're gonna have to I'm gonna have to come out here I would have to come out here every day and water them it's just it, like I said it's not feasible so that's kind of why I'm doing this uh, I guess and I think that kind of drives my point home about how this just makes it a lot easier that way um, is having a system like this. So I guess we could talk about setting this up and just, you know, the frequency of which I'm using it and all that good stuff. Um, you know, I have, this is the, this is the main line here that comes in from the side of the house. So all the water comes in here from the city into this point here. And um, then I, you know, divvy that off into different directions and each direction means a different thing and which leads to different different things you know in the yard even in ground stuff which I really don't water and really realized I don't even need that um, so that was kind of a bit of a waste to set that up but you know if the event there ever is a drought I guess I'll have it and then it'll be set up that way um, the nice thing about having these things is you can turn them on and off anytime you want so you could just switch this around like that and that'll turn it on or off so now it's on 
and the water can now get to that location. Um, so it's real easy to control where the water goes. Then I also have here is a timer. You can get this, and I don't really recommend a brand of those. Um, they have their kinks, you know, every year it seems like um, you have to kind of repair it. You have to change the batteries. You know, you have to kind of watch out for this thing because if that breaks and you're away on vacation, that could be a very bad thing. So you want to make sure that those things are working properly. Um, they're doing their thing. You know, um, it's something that's going to last for you. They are a little more on the expensive side. You're, you're talking like $50. Uh, for something this size, I think, you know, this one has a double, a double system going on here. So I can program this to set it up different settings for this one and different settings for this one, you know, so I can, um, it says it very clearly here. It says, you know, auto. So auto will turn it on automatically for me. Then you've got, you can turn it off if you want. You can turn it on how often you want it to go on, how long you want it to go on for and uh, what time of day you want it to go on, and then you can obviously set, set the clock here. So for me, I haven't set this up yet, but for me, I like to water all of my trees, uh, and you have to play around with it, guys, but I like to water the five gallon sizes at a one gallon per hour nod, um, emitter here, and I like to do that for about 15 minutes a day, and that's all these trees really need. Uh, whatever they they need to survive and be healthy is what you should be watering your containers you don't want to overwater your containers particularly in the case of the fig guys you don't want to overwater the the figs because it lowers the bricks quite significantly uh, it's a noticeable difference in taste it's a noticeable difference um, visually you can see what a watered down fig looks like versus a fig that um, hasn't been watered down and actually has a way higher brick score to it. So that's what I like to do for that. For this, the bigger sizes, I use a three gallon per hour emitter and I'll do it at the same duration. That's probably a little bit too much and we're gonna play around with that this year um, to really fine tune exactly how much water these trees are getting in that size um, so yeah like I said I think probably you could get away with using the one gallon per, per hour emitters for every single pot and just using those and adjusting the time I don't think you need to really adjust the the emitter itself um, just adjust how long the water goes on for I there's another way to do this, guys. Um, so, you know, within a drip system, there's other systems. So like me, I have the, the emitters here. You know, I'm using these emitters, but you can also use um, another way that I've done it, which I don't, which I think is probably better. Um, but you can see here, I have this guy set up here and along this, this one is these other types of um, drip lines that are smaller and you need to get a different uh, way to punch a hole. So you, the way you would hook up this, this emitter as an example, you would punch a hole into this, stick the emitter in there, you get a different size hole punch into this f to fit this. Everything has to fit. It's very confusing, but once you realize the sizes of everything, it becomes a lot easier. But um, what this does is that this actually goes in the pot like this and will water this really well, I find. Um, and this, I think, does a better job than the emitters that I've been using, as you can see. So that's up to you, at your discretion. I think, um, like I said, there's many different ways to do this kind of thing. and. No one way I think is maybe better. It's all up to you and your situation. So, I mean, that's kind of it, guys. I mean, what, what else is there to talk about? You know, you, you get all the different pieces that connect, you know, into the hose and, you know, make sure that they're male or female that you need and, um, you know, put the, the line into this piece here and then punch your holes in there. 
to get the emitters in there. And then at the very end, you get a, a thing that can stop it, um, stop the water from you know going out the other end. And then the, the last thing I guess worth mentioning is that you can get, um, they call them goof plugs. I don't know where, okay, here's one right here. So if you mess up or for whatever reason you move things around, you have less pots, you have more pots, this can adjust to that, you know? Um, you can basically fill the hole here with a goof plug and that way the water is not, as an example, this, the water here is gonna come out of the, here and onto the ground. It's not gonna do anything. Like I said, I haven't set this up. So I'm gonna be taking this out, fill that hole in, make a new hole here and put the emitter here so that it can then water this pot. You know, um, that's the only thing I really have left to do with these guys. Um, and it's just very easy to do that. So if you mess up or you wanna change things around, it's, it's pretty simple. Like this right here, this is a connector. So I had the end of it was right here and then I decided I wanna have another row of pots right here. So I added in more of the drip line to this portion here and just connected them, you know? And you can get these connections online. You know, you can get them all over the place. It's a very popular type of system. And that's kind of it, guys. So for all the beggars out there that's been asking me to do this kind of video, uh, this is it. And hopefully uh, this satisfies everybody's desire. And um, we won't have to do one until next year. <laughs> all right, guys. Um, thanks for watching. And I will talk to you all soon. Bye-bye.